We are delighted to have Sarah Davis with us because she has another tool, an enveloper, and it's another thing that she developed and has been showing everywhere, right? The beauty of the enveloper is it's one tool, but you can make any size envelope at all. So no matter what card shape you've made, you now aren't going to be stuck for an envelope and you can use <laughs> any type of card and paper to make the perfect matching envelope to finish off one of your treasured masterpieces. Well, let's get started. Okay, Sarah, do your magic. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is the enveloper tool, and it does come with full instructions. Now, every envelope is exactly the same technique, irrespective of what size you're doing. Oh. And all we're going to do is follow the simple six-step process, and we give you, for all of your standard envelope sizes, we already give you the measurements. But you'll find that once you start an experiment yourself, you can actually do any different size envelope. Okay, show us. Now I'm going to start <laughs> with the basic one. So if we'd made a, a card using a sheet of eight and a half by 11 folded in half, okay. so we're talking about a five and a half by eight and a half right. card. It tells me here for half a sheet of US letter paper, I need to start with a sheet of paper which is 11 and a quarter inches square. Now it's very important that we always start with a square. Okay, so first it's telling you the size of the card yes. and then it's telling you the paper that you need, that you need to, to create use. that. Okay, gotcha. So I've got my sheet which is 11 and a quarter inches square and it tells me to use lines F and G. And this is all that we need to do each okay. time. Reference the paper size and then reference the lines. So all I'm going to do is, this is the tool here, and we always position our card right into the corner here. So I'm using a card stock here, but it works just the same with paper stock. So we position into the corner, and then the first line it reference was line F. And you'll see here, here is F along here. Now I find it easier to work from the bottom upwards, but what I'll do is I'll score this upside down so that you can see. So first of all, I'm just running my tool up line F. Now we score line F and then we turn the card around 180 degrees so that we're working on the opposite corner and we score line F again. So we notice here I'm using the same line on opposite corners. Then on the two remaining corners we're going to use the other line which in this case was G and you'll see that when I score line G it actually crosses my F line in the corner. Mm -hmm. So we score line G, turn it around and we score line G again. And then that's the hard work done. <laughs> that was the hard stuff, huh? So then all we need to do is fold in on the scored lines. So I'm folding in the two shorter sides first. And then I'm going to fold up the bottom. And then we just use a little bit of double-sided tape. And you'll see that it comes together very quickly and easily. And then all I'm going to do is, with a little bit of a flap, you can either leave the flap there, or you'll find that it will just tuck inside and fold over. That's a nice finish. And then we have our glove. As quick and as simple as that. Now, if we wanted to add a finishing touch, you'll notice on the board, we've got these decorative motifs on the bottom. And all we do to add a motif to the flap of our card is simply lie the tool down and put the flap. Remember, the side that you want to show always goes face down. So we position it face down and you can see we go up against the little upstands and we use the rounded edge of the tool and we just feel for the embossing line here. So if you're not too confident with your decorative embossing, what you can do is rub a little bit of candle wax over the reverse or you can use, for example, you know, a tea light or a dryer sheet and it will just make the paper a little bit waxy. But we'll find that when we turn that over, it gives a beautiful little motif on the flap of the envelope. So you have something else that you can do? Well, the beauty with the enveloper is not only can we do standard envelopes, but we can also do what we call envelope boxes, which are your dimensional box envelopes, okay. which are completely different and unique and great for cards with any raised embellishments on the top. So it's exactly the same process. If I reference the instruction booklet again, you'll see that it's exactly the same procedure, but we need to score the line twice. Okay. Well, I'll do a different envelope size this time. I'll do the next size down, which makes a quarter US letter paper, so a quarter of an eight and a half by 11. It tells me this time we need to use eight and a quarter inch square, which we've got cut, and we need to use lines D and F. So what we do is, again, 
we just go right into the corner. And the first line we're going to score is line D. So we can see line D there. So I'm just going to first of all score line D. Then you'll see on the enveloper there's a tiny little step in the corner. And what we can do is we can position the card back up against the step. And now when we score line D, it will put it a quarter of an inch to the left of where we had the original line D. And this is the trick of how we get the envelope box. So we score line D again. And remember we do the same line on opposite corners. So I'm going to go back into the corner. So just like you said, it's the same process. Same process, only this time we're using a different size and different lines. Mm -hmm. And we're double scoring them. So there was D, and the next line we use is line F. Now you'll see our F line crosses the D line. Now the trick that I said about making envelopes is you always start with a square of paper. You must always use the same line on opposite corners. And as long as you follow those two rules and your lines cross in the corner, it will always make an envelope. So that's the test to make sure that that's the test. Okay. So if you're wanting to make up new envelope sizes, that's what you need to do. Now what I'm doing this time is I'm actually cutting out the corner where the lines cross because we're going to fold these over top of each other this so time. So you're removing all of the score lines in those corners? I'm going right into the second point of intersection. Now as well as cutting the corner out, if you wanted to neaten up your envelope, you could also then go in, if I just fold this over you'll see, I can go in and I can round off that corner. And it just makes it feel a little bit more like a professional envelope. Mm. Then what you'll find is, because of the way the lines are, if I just rub this between my fingers, it will find the creases on its own. So we do that on all four corners. <coughs> and then we're going to stick it together in exactly the same way. I'm just going to fold the two sides in, pop the little bit of tape on, and fold the bottom up. I'm again going to fold that in and I'm going to use the board to add, I'll, I'll do a different motif this time, we'll do the rounded edge motif, exactly the same procedure though, just embossing the corner and it just adds that little finishing touch. So remember if we go out of the lines it's not going to show on the other side. So again, when I fold this one over, I get the beautiful and you're going to wiggle motif. it again so we can make sure the camera sees it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and also, you can see now that we've got that depth on the envelope. So if you ever make a card that's got, you know, embellishments, sequins, any decoupage mm -hmm. on, it's going to fit in a card like this. And this envelope would just protect it for if you want to send it through the post. That's beautiful. It certainly makes you want to get started, doesn't it? It certainly does. <laughs> Well, we're back in the studio now, and I just wanted to give you some close-ups of some finished envelopes. So this is uh, using a 12 by 12 paper, and just so that you can see, the edges have been inked, so that gives you just a very dramatic uh, presentation. Here's another sample, and this was fun in that the inside was lined, and this is with the red glimmer paper. Speaking of which, here is one of the boxes, and let's get in tighter on this. And so this gives a little uh, thickness so that if you have uh, something that is thicker, and if we can get an even tighter, because just as Sarah demonstrated, this has been embossed, and, um, and then we couldn't help but add a dazzle to it. And then finally, I've got another one, and this is out of dotted vellum, and let me slip a piece of paper just so you can come in close and see that flap. What's been done there is again some more embossing. So, um, and then we've done one of the little crystals, the self-adhesive crystals. So there's just a lot you can do. And uh, here's the front of the envelope. So you can make lots and lots. And did have a question from a couple of people of US letter size. Well, that's gonna be your standard eight and a half by 11. And I want to assure you that Sarah's just as absolutely charming in person as she was on camera. And uh, wasn't it fun to hear that uh, British accent? So thank you for joining us.